Hi everybody. So I've had a lot of people asking me to respond to the uh, new Eldar models and uh, some of the new Eldar rumors. So, uh, you know, uh, in the spirit of excitement for this new codex, I am going to respond to a few of these things that we've seen on, on the last few weeks and uh, the stuff that we are going to be excited about to see in this next coming week. So as we can see here is one of the beautiful new flyers for the uh, the Eldar. Uh, this is, I think, the Hemlock Fighter. It's got kind of like a cool little uh, tail over here, looking very different than the um, actual uh, anti-air version of it. But let's take a look first over here. This is a great view of it. I mean, uh, at first, I got to tell you, when I saw these models, uh, the blurry version of this one, uh, you know, I think we all saw those blurry photos orig originally about a week and a half ago. It looked terrible. <laughs> it looked abysmal. It looked like some old dark Eldar flyer from second edition. But this view alone should tell you that this is a beautiful, beautiful kit. I mean, just look at this uh, this thing over here. It's just amazing looking. And uh, the actual um, the actual anti air version of the fighter looks pretty awesome too. I mean, that is a pretty badass looking uh, looking fighter. Can't wait to put these guys into my army. These are already some of the first models I've, uh, I've uh, you know, ordered. Now, uh, the one worry I do have is that these fighters, uh, I, I, these flyers, I'm really worried that they're going to be too many points to field. In fact, some of the rumors that we've seen, I'm going to flip over now to uh, Bell of Lost Souls. This is a great site that's been collecting a lot of rumors. And uh, some of the information they've had on these guys is that it looks like the... The uh, heavy, the, uh, the the heavier one, the uh, the wraith fighter is 185 points, and the crimson hunter looks like it's going to be 160 points. I mean, that's just insane. If those point costs are real, um, they better have some crazy abilities. But you know, I'm a little worried that these fighters are going to be just armor 10 for 185 points. You know, that's just that's very troubling because uh, you know I don't tend to spend more than about 120 or 130 points on my vehicles and my elder army. So finding that many points to put in something that could just get shot down, you know, before it can even do anything by an interceptor gun, that could be very scary. However, these are just rumors. We don't know what the point costs are. Plus, we don't actually know what the abilities are. We don't really know ultimately what's on them. Although this, uh, the Crimson Hunter, the uh, the Nightshade one, is is expected to have two bright lances and a pulse laser so four strength at ap2 shots not too bad if that's the case that would be pretty impressive uh you know no idea what this guy's going to be doing uh, quite yet so we're going to see all about that but pretty interesting stuff you know the main issue with me is uh, i'm just worried that the point costs are going to be out of whack but hopefully that's not the case okay let's um head over to uh, the one that everyone's been talking about the wraith knight i mean look at this guy that's just an enormous model enormously expensive as well but i guess uh, if you compare it to point costs of other things gw puts out it's actually not surprisingly uh, expensive if you really consider how large it is it is a pretty cool looking kit looks like it has a lot of options to do and as we found out in points wise this guy is probably going to be 240 points base I mean, that's just twisted. <laughs> but I do expect he's going to have some pretty cool rules. If the rumors are true that these things are, you know, strength 10 AP2 double shots, which I really doubt whether those rumors are true at all. But if that's the case, man, this kind of a setup can really put out a lot of shots. And this is the kind of thing that's going to have to die if it's on the table. Otherwise, you're just not going to win a game if you can't kill... Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to beat an Elder Army with a, with a Wraith Knight if you can't kill it, if that's true, if these are really so shooty, these guns. But I suspect it's not actually the case. I suspect it's a little bit more balanced uh, than that. But uh, it is a cool-looking model. Um, you know what's interesting is people... Um, well, people have been talking that he sort of looks a little weird. Well, the thing is, is that he's meant to look like a gigantic Eldar Guardian. Or, uh, you know, at most, maybe a gigantic uh, Eldar Dire Avenger with a Wraith-style head. If you consider it that way, he actually looks like a guardian. He's got the same shoulder kind of vents on him. He's got his weapons kind of mounted in a way that look like that. These shoulder pads even, these ones here, they actually resemble the guardian and dire avenger shoulder pads. So that's that's the way I kind of like to look at him. And then when I think of him that way, it seems a lot cooler to me when uh, when I think of him that way. Pretty awesome looking model. Can't wait to get my hands on one. I don't think I'm going to buy it uh, straight up from GW though. Uh, 140 bucks here in Canada is just a ton of money. I'm going to try to get some discount on it from a, an online reseller. But looking pretty good regardless. I uh, can't wait for those models. And 
uh, let's talk about some of the Wraith Guard. Now, they, the models look amazing, i got to say. They look really good. I'm a little frustrated I'm going to have to add 40 millimeter bases to all my guys, but you know, I'm sure I'll, I'll work around that. Now, my biggest issue is that if the rumors are true that these guys uh, are roughly 32 points each, that's a bit disappointing, you know? Because, uh, not because they, um, they are brutally disastrously overcosted, although they are pretty much overcosted in the old codex, but the only thing that makes them really playable in the old codex is Fortune. And if Fortune, which we're going to talk about later on, but if Fortune is uh, just like one of many psychic powers that you have to roll for on a tree, you can't rely on it to work. So I really wouldn't want to take a unit of 10 guys that are going to get blown to bits by a, a couple of um, you know uh, plasma cannon shots. Uh, it's just not worth it for me if I can't rely on that re-rollable you know, cover or re-rollable... Re uh, uh, save uh, armor save against just piddly shooting you know it's really painful to have a bunch of strength three shots roll some sixes and then you fail a couple of saves and there go you know 70 points worth of guys so that remains to be seen if these guys are uh, still that expensive you know I thought they'd, they'd get a lot cheaper if fortune was going to become much more unreliable but again we don't know what the reality is you can't uh, make uh, serious judgments uh, based on uh, you know just hearsay so we have to see what the rumors are going to be here's a really cool option to give them um, you know an invulnerable save and an axe I'm sure that'll increase their strength or something yeah, you know it's cool that you can make them uh, into melee versions I really hope and I do fully expect that we're going to see the ability to actually feel, the, feel these guys as troops in units smaller than 10 so that would be really cool if you can have a unit smaller than 10 of these guys because I can actually start taking little units of like four or five guys with just swords and then four or five guys with some wraith cans. That would be really cool if that was the case. But going back to some of the other rumors here. So back to uh, Bell of Lost Souls. And, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting stuff. The battle focus is very interesting. The ability to run and shoot in the same turn. That does kind of... Um, assuage the problem of having you know ridiculously short range shuriken weapons which it, if the rumors are true it appears they're not going to get increased in range which is probably the biggest most disappointing thing um, elder players uh, could be told but with this ability to run uh, when they shoot that's that's pretty interesting because right now people do play dire avengers mostly mostly shooty and no one in the right mind is assaulting anything with guardians so the ability to kind of um, you know, run and fire is, is, is pretty cool. Plus, it seems like shuriken weapons are going to get the ability to ignore armor on a roll of six, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, it is frustrating if the Dire Avenger Exarch can't buy an ability that gives them those extra shots, because, you know, the, the ignoring armor on a, on a six is cool against elite troops, but it, it sucks if, you know, you use, you're used to firing at, like, giant squads of, um, of orcs or, or gaunts and things. I mean, that really sucks to lose that extra shot on like a given turn so I don't know we're gonna we're gonna see these are all rumors we don't know what's going on we're gonna see I'm sure they got all kinds of benefits though uh, as of right now I have a lot of faith in Phil Kelly to write a extremely playable exciting codex I do have faith in him I hope that faith is not misplaced <laughs> but uh, you know we have to see what the rumors are gonna be pretty interesting choice to give um, you know uh, some Eldar troops this ability to run and shoot um, if the rumors are true about the um, about the psychic powers, that is interesting. So fortune would stay, but it becomes just a generic power that you have to roll for. It means it becomes very unreliable. And the uh, very many of the old Eldar troops, I'm saying old, it's the codex we use right now, but it's going to be old in about a week. Many of those older troops are not really playable without fortune on them. At least not in my view, you know. I wouldn't use Wraith Guard without Fortune on a full unit. I wouldn't use Warp Spiders without Fortune hanging around on a unit nearby. It's just not worth it for me with those units unless they drop in cost drastically. Because they're just too easy to blow away with specialty weapons, you know. Like a bunch of Wraith Guard without a re-rollable 5 plus save, they drop like flies to a couple of accidental you know, plasma cannon hits, or a couple of shots from like, uh, you know, like a battle cannon. It's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. So if you're forced to just roll for fortune, um, and you're trying to build an army around uh, some of those units that are, that are overpriced, it's not going to work so well. But hopefully, with the new codex, the prices will get better of all the, um, all, all the point costs of all the troops. It's pretty interesting. Interesting that they chose to keep guide in the game while um, you know, with given that the divinity, uh, divination tree still has prescience, which is still apparently from the the cards, the card scans we've seen, 
still superior to Guide, uh, other than the Guide has a longer range. So uh, that's kind of interesting, a little bit uh, a little bit weird to hear about that, but so be it. <clears throat> um, you know, some of the other stuff that really struck me, uh, we heard uh, that uh, there are some rumors that Fire Dragons are getting more expensive, which I got to admit is a pretty shocking thing to, uh, to hear at first. At first, my gut reaction was, oh my goodness, what is going on? Did Phil Kelly deliberately try to find some way to make them more expensive? Gave him a 3 plus armor and some other abilities and trying to make them more expensive. But you know what? In retrospect now, after having a couple of days to think about it, they were pretty cheap. They were a little bit undercosted, even in the old codex. And uh, and and they they did need to potentially be a little bit a uh, little bit more expensive, um, but I, so I, I think giving them the three plus armor it actually does make quite a difference. As much as I joke about you know armor saves being pathetic on Eldar, no matter what uh, what level the armor save is, because you you cause so many wounds on them, the three plus does make a big difference. It means those heavy bolters and those uh, those kinds of blast weapons that are AP four that can just sort of wipe out you know five or six. Um, you know, Dire Avengers or uh, Fire Dragons in one shot won't be as useful against these guys. They'll be able to shrug off most of those hits instead of just dying instantly. So that's, that is pretty meaningful. And the, the idea, this ability to, uh, you know, a battle focus, the idea of running and shooting first, it means they're sh they should be able to get into Melter range a lot more consistently. Now, it's disheartening to see, unless one of these abilities uh, equals Tank Hunters, it's disheartening to see them not have a Tank Hunters ability on the Exarch, because that's kind of their spiel, you know? And, uh, I, you know, for those of you who've seen my video on them in the previous edition, I actually liked Tank Hunters on these guys. Uh, it, it, if, other than just being an iconic ability, it was actually quite useful if for people uh, like me who I want certainty. I want to maximize the, 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 the probability that something that I need to happen is going to happen. Who knows, though? Maybe Crushing Blow. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's Tank Hunters. I don't know. It's a little bit sad to see that you still have to pay to upgrade your Exarch. You know, all these other armies, they get their sergeants for free, and for some stupid reason, uh, it looks like, at least from these rumors, again, these are rumors, take them with a grain of salt, but it looks like from these rumors, we're still going to have to pay for our sergeants. Which is just kind of sad, but, uh, you know, hopefully uh, the rules themselves will make up for it. Um, I don't want to spend too much more time, um, uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but I expect within a day or two we're going to see a lot more rumors uh, coming out, we're going to see some scans probably from the actual codex pages, who knows what, what kind of stuff is lurking out there. Um, the one thing I, I do want to say is stay positive, don't believe all the rumors until you have the codex in your hand. It's easy to get like frustrated and disheartened when you hear stuff, but the problem is people who see these things or they read about them, they may not be Eldar players. They may not even remember exactly what they read. So wait until the codex is in your hand before you make a serious judgment. Uh, be excited. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I'm sure uh, we're going to get plenty of new toys, plenty of new interesting rules, and uh, I'm excited about it. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to leave you guys now, but uh, keep on believing and keep on watching, okay?